So Dr. Anand Kumar will speak to us on optical and lifestyle interventions for myopia progression. Um, thank you, Ashwin. Uh, thank you, Siddharth, for that wonderful uh, prelude to my uh, talk, which is the main highlight of this session. So I'll be speaking on the optical and lifestyle changes to control myopia. Uh, apart from the pharmacological intervention, which uh, Dr. Ashwin uh, very uh, uh, nicely elaborated upon, there are certain environmental modifications and optical devices which have been found to prevent myopia progression. Among the environmental modifications, uh, the best and probably the most effective intervention is increase in the outdoor activities. Many studies highlight the protective effect of outdoor activities. In a recent meta-analysis, it was found that every additional hour of outdoor time per week led to a reduction in the risk of myopia by 2%. And that's a huge uh, figure, believe me. In another study, it was found that the chance of becoming myopic is reduced by around one third if the time spent outdoors is increased from five hours to more than 14 hours per week. Now, how does this act? The mechanism of increased outdoor time is not completely clear. However, it is strongly suggested that it is the time spent outdoors itself rather than doing physical activities outdoor, which is the protective uh, factor here. It is thought that uh, the three-dimensional structures of the outdoor environment possibly form some specific defocus patterns on the retina and this is protective against progression of myopia. Uh, the protective effect of outdoor activity is at least partly light mediated release of dopamine from the retina. Like Dr. Ashwin mentioned that increased dopamine levels are known to inhibit axial elongation. Also, the absence of ultraviolet light indoors may provoke axial myopia. Uh, according to Flitkoff, uh, he proposed that the spatial frequency composition of man-made environment are very different from those of natural environment. And it is these frequencies which may be provoking uh, myopia progression. And hence, enhancing spatial frequency of the visual scene may be protective against progression. The evidence points that outdoor activities are more protective against onset of myopia rather than progression of myopia in a child who already has myopia. Wu in a set of Chinese children found that participation in outdoor activities during school recess had a significant effect on myopic shift in non-myopic children, but not so much in children who already have myopia. In another study, Jones found that there was no effect of near work or time spent outdoors on the progression of myopia in those children who already had established myopia. Hence, it is always better to promote outdoor activities in children before they, before they go on to develop myopia. Th however, there have been other studies which have shown that faster myopia progression occurs during the darker winter months than the brighter summer months. This may indirectly point that outdoor activities or sunlight may have a protective role even in myopic children. A number of studies have reported lower levels of vitamin D in myopes compared to non-myopes. And lower vitamin D3 levels are known to be associated with longer axial length, higher risk of myopia in young children. And this effect was independent of the outdoor exposure time. However, there are some contrasting studies. It was found in a study that total vitamin D and D3 levels are just biomarkers for the time spent outdoors. And there was no evidence that they were independently associated with future myopia development. Also, in a study by the CREAM consortium, 
a mendelian randomization analysis did not support a direct involvement of vitamin d with myopic refractive error as it was found that genetically predisposed children to vitamin d deficiency did not become more myopic as compared to the other children hence the role of vitamin d uh, in preventing myopia progression is not very well established now what about indoor lighting it has been found that increasing the light levels from approximately 100 to 500 lux in school classrooms had a significant effect on myopia onset refraction and axial elongation in another study in a group of chinese children it was found that time spent with a light intensity of more than 3000 lux was a protective factor for myopia in china so brighter the room lesser would be the progression of myopia does the type of indoor light play any role it was found that use of the more commonly used these days led lamps was associated with more refractive error and longer axial length so this may come as a surprise to most of you uh, in fact there is a french regulatory agency which recommends avoiding the use of led light sources in places frequented by children as it may cause possible photochemical damage and photoreceptor loss so among the environmental optimize uh, uh, environmental modifications there is strong evidence that less near work and more out outdoor activities provide protection it is the time outdoor itself rather than the physical activity which is the protective factor and the link between time outdoors in prevention of myopia is much stronger than the link between time outdoors and slowing of progression of myopia now coming on to the optical measures under correction of myopia with glasses has been a very common practice since many years the theory is that it reduces myopia progression by reducing the need for accommodation however current evidence suggest suggest that this might actually be harmful as under correction does not provide optimal distant visual acuity and this may lead to a reduction in outdoor activities in some children in contrast under correction has also been shown to promote myopia progression more recently a specially designed spectacle lens called the dims or the defocus incorporated multiple segment has been used for control of myopia the lens design has a central optical zone which is used for correcting the myopic refractive error and it is surrounded by multiple segments of a fixed myopic defocus of plus 3.5 diopters this enables the lens to provide a clear as well as a myopic defocus uh, when the child is looking at all distances be it a distance intermediate or near distance so this uh, uh, spectacle is based on the peripheral defocus theory like dr siddharth mentioned earlier in a myopic eyes the light rays are focused in front of the retina and in the periphery behind the retina when we use a single conventional single vision lens the central rays get focused on to the retina but in the periphery they get focused even behind the retina causing a hyperopic defocus which is thought to be promoting the myopic progression the dims technology creates a myopic defocus in the periphery and this is known to slow down the myopic progression so lamps uh, studied the effect of these uh, glasses in a ch in children of east asian ethnicity and found very good results there was uh, less myopia progression in 52% of kids less axial elongation in 62% of kids and almost 21% of children showed no myopia progression whatsoever same uh, group of children were found uh, were followed up for 6 years and similar effects were maintained and when these children stopped wearing the dims lenses and switched over to single vision lenses their myopia progression was much faster than the children who continued wearing dims lenses anand you have about a minute yeah thanks ashwin 
so uh, uh, some years back there was uh, the use of progressive additional lenses uh, they allow the child to see objects clearly both at distance and near and this works by reducing the accommodative effort effort uh, these lenses had a, a, a mild to moderate uh, reductions in myopia progression and they were soon overtaken by uh, uh, other uh, glasses such as the dims glasses uh, since the last few years multifocal or bifocal contact lenses have also been tried out and they have been found to be pretty effective they slow down myopia progression to the tune of 30 to 38 percent and axial length reduction uh, uh, prevent axial length uh, growth by around 30 to 50 percent over a period of two years uh, uh, a commercially available uh, contact lens my sight is a daily disposable multi-zone design contact lens and it is it produces lower myopia progression by around 60 percent and lower axial growth of the eye by around 50 percent as at three years compared to the spectacle use so just to summarize among optical measures results for dim glasses are very promising and there is benefit mo with moderate certainty for the my sight contact lens and orthokeratology which Dr. Pooja would be speaking about in greater detail. Thank you.